the hose here, it starts pumping air right away through your nose. You gotta keep your mouth closed because if your mouth is open, the air goes through your nose and comes out your mouth. It's like, I'm not kidding. It makes that exact sound. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Lori. Today's episode is brought to you by Truly Lime Hard Seltzer. Hmm. Are you ready to have a sip? Ah, I'm just kidding. I'm not sponsored. But <laughs> how cool would that be? <laughs> Enough of that. Thank you for joining me. I am going to talk to you today about sleep apnea. If you clicked on this video, it's probably because either you want to know more about sleep apnea or you have sleep apnea or you're wondering um, if this is my real hair. <laughs> it is. If you're here about sleep apnea, let's jam about it. Um, okay, this uh, is my new sleep apnea mask. Um, I have had sleep apnea now for just over a year. I was diagnosed um, in October of 2019. So uh, I'm going to open this mask. This is my new one. I'm going to open it uh, and show you guys what it looks like, how I put it on. Uh, I'll tell you about if it's comfortable or not. And uh, we'll just we'll just talk about it. Um, do you have sleep apnea? Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> do you have sleep apnea? If you do, let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. When were you diagnosed? Uh, how did you find out that you had sleep apnea? Did you find out on your own? Um, did somebody tell you that you might have it? I wanna know. Uh, if you wanna know my story, I'll get into it now. I started like snoring, I believe once I had turned 30. Like around when I turned 30 is when uh, I was told that I had snored by my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. And, but before that, no one had ever really told me that I snored. I know that I talked in my sleep. Uh, that's something that I do. Last year, in 2019, in September, I went on a trip to Las Vegas with my girlfriends. It was my friend's 30th birthday. We went there to party and do all of the things and see all of the things and it was so much fun. But we all shared a suite. So in the Luxor, uh, you know, the big pyramid one, uh, we stayed in a suite there. So all five of us stayed in a suite the first night. We were all, like, we all went to bed and I remember being woken up by who Marika I think woke me up I think Marika woke me up and Sharon Sharon and Marika they both wanted to wake me up I'm not I don't exactly remember who woke me up first but they told me that I was snoring and I was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry and they were like well no like we're we're, we're worried about you because you would snore and then you would stop breathing and I was like, really? <laughs> and yeah, so uh, they said like they were worried about me and I could tell it was coming from like a place in their hearts. You know, it's like three o'clock in the morning, I think it was. And yeah, so anyways, the, for the rest of the night, I like 
fell back asleep, but I didn't because I was so scared that I was going to do it again. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to be rude and like keep them awake, right? So I was like, oh, I'll just not sleep. So I just like started playing on my phone, which was hard because the reception there was not very good. Like in the, when you're in the pyramid, the reception is not so great. Just FYI. The morning we all got ready. We went for breakfast. We did all the sightseeing. That night we all crawled into bed and you know, we talked for a long time and then once everybody was like falling asleep, I like got out of the bed, okay? I got out of the bed, I walked across the floor, I got onto the couch, because there was like a couch area, and then I played on my phone and I stayed awake all night because I would be so embarrassed if I kept everybody else awake that night and um, I figured if I stayed on the couch even if I did fall asleep I would be like farther away so I wouldn't annoy them and I think it was around like five or six o'clock in the morning when the girls started to wake up and they saw that I was on the couch and they're like what are you doing over there and I was like oh I just slept over here <laughs> I didn't want to wake, I didn't want to annoy them, <laughs> right? So, they're like, why are you doing that? And they made me go back to the bed. And, uh, yeah, and then the next night I, I stayed in the bed. But again, I like, I tried my hardest to stay awake all night. Because <sighs> I was just so... I didn't want to take away from their trip. Like, we were in Vegas. And I was keeping them awake because I was not only snoring so loud, but I kept stopping breathing and they were worried about me. Like, maybe I just won't sleep. <laughs> How about that? Um, yeah, it's like, I get emotional thinking about it. Anyways, when I got home, I did a bit of research about, like, stopping breathing while you're sleeping. And, uh, that's when I learned about sleep apnea <laughs> and it's everything that I was reading. I was kind of like, ah, oh, this could be a thing. Uh, I remember for the last few years, I've been really just tired in the, like, I fall asleep on the couch so easy in the evening. Like some nights, I'm not even kidding. When I, when I had my daycare and I would, I worked 10 and a half hour days with no break and seven o'clock at night rolls around and I'm like passed out and I like Darren and I my husband and I we would be watching a show like we were watching Big Brother or Survivor or something and I would just fall asleep halfway through and then he would turn it off and the next day he'd be like so we'll just watch another day <laughs> I'm like yeah sorry so I also talked to my husband and I was like so the girls said that I kept stopping breathing while I was sleeping. And he's like, yeah, you do that. And I was like, why didn't you tell me? Why? And he's like, well, I told you I would woke you up all the time because you're snoring. I'm like, yes, but I thought you were just being rude <laughs> because I was snoring and I was making you mad. <laughs> and he's like, well, it was kind of annoying. <laughs> But, yeah, you kind of stop breathing, I guess, sometimes. And I was like, maybe I should go see his doctor. <laughs> so, anyways, I, I researched. I found some phone numbers. I called a few of them. This uh, one place in particular, I think it's Dr. Hol Holstrom. Holstrom? Anyways, he invented this mouth guard that goes in your mouth. And it stops you from... Um, stopping breathing because he uh, I think he like took like a, an x-ray thing of my throat and he could see that there was something in here that doesn't open while I'm laying down kind of thing I don't know it's kind of weird 
I don't really know how to explain it, but he had a whole diagram and he drew it out. He said, but you should also go to your doctor and have them uh, give you a CPAP test trial prescription. So I had to, so I had to do that. So they gave me a prescription to go and get a trial of a sleep apnea machine so a CPAP machine what you have to do when you get that it's really easy but also kind of weird you have to put a, a thing that goes over your finger I can't remember which finger maybe this finger and it's hooked up to a band that goes around your chest with a little like monitor on it and it I guess measures your breathing along with the thing because you have a pulse in your finger, right? And so I had to do that for one night or two nights. I can't remember now. Again, this is a year ago and my memory is garbage. Like it's actually garbage. I took the equipment back to the place and they were like, oh, well, we'll send the info over to your doctor and then will um, have you back to get your machine if you need one. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, a f about a week, w no, maybe a week went by and I hadn't heard back. And I was like, mm, something's not right here. I feel like something's not right. And so anyways, I just called the doctor's office. I was like, hey, I'm just wondering if you guys got my test results back from my sleep apnea test that I did. And the lady was like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll double check on that. She said, the, your doctor is actually on holiday, but he'll be back on Tuesday. And I was like, okay, great, thanks. And then I'm not even kidding you, maybe 30 minutes later, not even, like probably closer to 15 minutes later, I got a phone call from a random number and it was my doctor on holiday. He's on holiday. He's calling me from his cell phone saying that I need to go and get a CPAP machine now. Like he's like, I want you to call uh, the doctor's office, call my office and get them to send you the prescription for the CPAP machine so you can go and get one right now. And I was like, oh, okay. I could sense the panic. I'm not new to earth. I like when a doctor is calling you on holiday, telling you to get a prescription and get it immediately, you do it. So I, the lady was even like, you don't even have to come in for it. I'll just email it to you so you can have it right now. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> And, oh, that's right. So I didn't really know exactly what sleep apnea did or what the machine did or whatever. And the doctor explained to me that the machine counted how many times I stopped breathing every hour. And that's your sleep apnea number. So uh, I think, what did they say, like five and under? is normal, right? Like you want to be like none is great. One, two is common. Up to five normal-ish. And do you want to know what my number was? Fifty-six. That means that I stopped breathing 56 times an hour. 56 times an hour. I stopped breathing every hour of my sleep. No wonder I had been so exhausted. I worked so hard. I worked so many hours a day and I was just exhausted. I always just thought it was just... That's just me. I'm getting older, whatever. And, uh, yeah. So, I 
got my CPAP machine when I went for the consultation at this place here. Sleep MD or Snore MD, sorry. Snore MD. Uh, the one in Murrayville, which is technically Langley, BC. It, they are phenomenal in there. I'm not even kidding. They, every person that I've seen has been caring and intelligent and very uh, just easy to talk to and they ask great questions and they have everything all on my file so when I go back the next time they already know who I am type thing. I mean I've only had to go in a few times but uh, this was my first time going in during COVID and I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie as you know if you've been following me for a while I am very nervous of COVID and I am very cautious. I don't go anywhere without, you know, gloves and a mask and all of that stuff. But I'm sitting in my car because I was a bit early and the lady, somebody went in and then they came out and then the person that was working there, she wiped down the handle of the door. I was like, yes, yes, I'm the best. Oh, it was the best. It was oh, seeing that made me feel good walking in there. And uh, I sat down in the chair. She asked me the questions. She's like, it's been, you know, over a year now. And it was time for a new mask. So that's where we're at now. And let's open this together. As you can see here, these are the instructions. You put the part, this part over your head. The, the nose piece goes under your nose, obviously. At the top of the headpiece, there's like a little part here for the nozzle to go onto for the hose. And that's where you attach the hose. So, let's open this sucker up. This is um, a small, a size small. And, da -da -da -da. ooh. Looks so fancy. Oh, what the heck? It's got two nose pieces. Why? Three nose pieces? I only got one in my other one. Oh, this is a small medium. This is a small. This is so this is what I normally use is the small. And what's on here? A medium. It's just No, medium is too big. So this is how you take it off. I'm gonna move my drink there. So you gotta kind of squeeze it. And it comes out super easy. You squeeze it, and it comes out. So medium, too big. Small. See? It fits really nice and snug around my nose. And see how it has an arrow here? You're gonna put the arrow where this letter is because the other side has dog hair on it now. Doesn't have anything. This side doesn't have anything. Ta-da! All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put my hair up. I told myself to have a hair tie ready do I have one ready? Oh no. Sorry, I just made you all lucky there. Okay, hold on. Grab any old hair tie. So, this is what you do. This is what I do anyways. Hold on. So. I just sort of put my hair up, not in a super high pony. I just kind of want it like in the middle there, see? Okay, then you take this bad boy. Oh, this is a different nozzle top. This is much, this looks much sturdier than the one that I have. So this goes over your head like this. I'm 
actually. I like to sometimes bring it all the way down and then push my hair back. And and then there's all these Velcro pit bits here. I just gotta make that tighter. It feels very loose. Okay, that's better. So I like to have it not too far back. Basically just on my root line this is where I like to have it. I find it doesn't crease my hair that much that way. And then you take your hair down because when your hair is down, it keeps... Hold on. So if my hair was up, this is here. And then as I sleep, this rises. So when your hair's down, it kind of holds it in place. Does that make sense? And this is what I look like <laughs> with it on. Um, this is how I go to bed. And it saves my life. It gives me my energy back. It allows me to be normal even though I'm not normal <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I go to bed like this. Darren thinks it's funny and I think it's funny too. And I remember the first night I had to go to bed with this on and the nozzle in. He was like, good night, Robocop. <laughs> And what's really funny is when you attach the hose here, it starts pumping air right away through your nose. You got to keep your mouth closed because if your mouth is open, the air goes through your nose and comes out your mouth. It's like, <sighs> I'm not kidding. It makes that exact sound. out <laughs> I'm not even I wouldn't even be breathing it would just come straight out I actually remember one time Darren um, was saying goodnight to me and um, I was like put your head in my mouth <laughs> he's like what I'm like just put your hand right here and he, he did and I was like I just opened my mouth and it was like <gasps> this is like <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go now. You've been listening to me ramble for far too long, I'm sure. If you like this video, go ahead, click the like video. If you want to see more from me, click subscribe. Um, I would love to have you join my Palm Squad. I am trying to uh, bring some positivity in this crazy world and... The only way to do that is to try and connect with you. So let's do it. Let's um, conquer the world. And I will... Oh, also, I can show you guys in another video how to clean your CPAP machine, how to um, know what the water levels mean, and... Uh, all that sort of good stuff and I can show you the whole attach it and thing if you want to do that or if you want to see me do that let me know in the comments okay and I will catch you on the flip side also I just found this in the bag that the thing came in and it's like a nose measuring piece so you can see what size you are um, it gives you a little diagram and it gives you this. This is so you can measure your nose. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to measure my nose. This does not feel comfortable. See where it's like hitting me, me in my cheeks? And then I go to this side. And it's like, it's like perfect right here. This red, this red line is perfect. So that's a small um 
And I think it's kind of funny because if you've been following me for a while, you might know that I, I'm not a fan of purple. And this side is purple. This side is red. I'm the red side. <laughs> Anyways, I just thought I'd share that because A, it's educational and B, it's kind of funny. <laughs>